So you're heading out to the range, you've got your new Walther PDP in hand, and you just absolutely love this gun. You've been running it with irons up till now, but your optics plate just came in and you are ready to take that leap. But I'm gonna break your spirits. It's gonna break, and I'll show you why. Let's get to work. Guys, work here. Welcome back to Work the Trigger. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the Walther PDP. Now, my first shots of the PDP just came out recently, and overall, I like the gun. But in looking into it, talking with some buddies, and taking it apart, I noticed a glaring omission that Walther put into this gun. The optic system is prone to break. Now, I got to throw out a little bit of information here because I know the Walther fanboys are going to be coming at me hard with the one-two. First of all. This is not guesswork. I have a degree in mechanical design. One of the things that we do is we evaluate inherent design issues. We understand strengths of designs and materials and can apply that to current and up and coming designs. We understand all the subtleties on how mechanical components interact with each other and how forces interact within that physical environment. So really quick, let's hit the bench and I'm gonna show you exactly what the problem is. Okay guys, so now that I've got you on the bench, let me show you exactly why I say that the system on the Walther is going to fail. Now, in order to start from the beginning and kind of understand where this is coming from, you have to understand a lot of different things. What's happening to the optic and how what is happening to the optic is transferred down into the firearm as well as how fasteners work. So first we've got the optic. Now in a plate style system, the optic here is mounted to a plate. Let's just grab this CNH plate for a Glock. The optic is mounted to a plate. Now on the bottom here, you can see that we have corresponding holes and nubs. Now, why do we have those and why are they necessary? Well, when firing a gun, the slide is moving back and forth. And this is important on the slide mounted optics. So this optic is getting thrown back and forth and back and forth as the slide reciprocates. Now, as we all know, what an object in motion stays in motion unless it's acted upon by an exterior force. Well, that exterior force in the case of the optic happens to be the spring inside the slide of the gun transferring through the slide through the plate into the optic here now that force needs transferred in a way that's solid fasteners are not meant to transfer sheer force they are only compressive force and that compression is meant to pull whatever you're trying to keep from moving down onto another surface keeping it from sliding but you can see here even though i'm pressing with a little bit of force here it still slides relatively freely well what they do is they put these little nubs in here those nubs then integrate in with the dot, taking all of that shear force off of the screws. So now we have a two-piece system. We have the tensile force of the fasteners creating a friction surface here to keep that dot from moving, and we have force transfer through those lugs. Well, the same thing has to happen between the plate and our slide, because now you've created a unified body here that is still reciprocating back and forth, and that force still needs transferred down into the slide, which is what's enacting upon this. And again, we've got fasteners going from the plate here into the slide, but those fasteners aren't meant to take that kind of force. So now what we need, we've got those nubs here, and those nubs between the plate and the optic are going to keep it from moving in any direction in relation to the plate. Now we need to do the same thing for the slide. So this is a Glock 45 MOS. I'm going to go ahead and pull that off. And you can see in the slide here, we've got a valley down the center of slightly raised material, as well as, let me see if I can get this to focus, a raised nub right here. And that raised nub, as well as the fit of the plate inside here, is going to keep us from getting a whole lot of movement. Now, you do still have movement, but overall the movement in this system is around five thousandths of an inch. Now, it's significantly greater if you grab the Glock optic plate. You can actually hear it. The play in this system is about doubled to our CNH system here. But all the same, we have that shear force transferred into the face of this because it fits significantly tighter. The side-to-side -side shear is transferred in through this bar here, and and the forward and back is transferred slightly through this nub up here. Now that's the Glock system. Other manufacturers have improved upon this system. Take CZ for instance. So the CZ plate system actually has a crossbar placed here to be able to handle the lateral movement with this large central lug and the longitudinal movement with these spurs off the side, creating a very, very solid, almost no play system here. And that works with both the CNH plate and with the CZ custom plate, you get a you get a lockdown movement in any direction using this system. Now, SIGs use it a little bit different of a system. This is a plate for a SIG P320 for a Legion. And on the bottom, SIG has two lugs, very similar to the way that we lug the optic in the top. 
like that. But with the SIG plate, it's lugged into the slide with these two lugs, which effectively takes all of that movement out of the system. Now, let's go to the Walther. So here is the Walther plate. This is the stock plate that it comes with. And you notice how much play this plate has in it. If I pull that plate off, you can see here, there is no lug system in this plate system. Here, I've got a CNH plate also for the Walther. Now, when I initially looked at the system, you can see this is the back of the plate here. It actually goes on this way. I saw this cut out up here and I thought, well, that's a decent sized lug, but it's not. It's actually clearance for the striker channel here. They actually have to clearance for the striker channel because the optics cut is so low that it's cut into that striker channel. So unfortunately what that does is as I put this on here, not only can you hear forward and back movement by a good 20 to 30 thousandths of an inch, but I've also got 3 sixteenths of an inch of side to side movement. Now we do have the lugs being able to lock the plate to the dot, but that lack of a locking system inside the slide is going to cause some major issues. The ability for that optic to slide around and move. So that energy and motion shift is going to be transferred down into the fasteners, which are going into here. Now, and again, fasteners aren't meant to take that kind of force. They are only meant to be able to pull the plate down on top of a surface and hold it there and use that friction to be able to hold that plate in place. And unfortunately, in the application of firearms, that is just not enough. Now, why did Walther go with this particular system? I honestly have absolutely no idea. The PPQ, the predecessor to the PDP here, had extremely large lugs coming down actually into the slide on either side, locking the plate into the slide, which is a significantly better system than what we're seeing here. This system is going to break. There isn't a standard fastener that you can create, which is what these use, that's going to be able to take this kind of shear force. If you want to be able to create a fastener that will take that kind of shear force, they do exist, but that's not what this is made for and it's not what it comes with. I guess we'll have to see just how long we wait until these things start failing, but I promise you, they will fail. So there it is, guys. Unfortunately, Walther has missed a gigantic design feature on the PDP. Unfortunately, it is going to lead to breakages, without a doubt. We all know that plate systems are inherently weaker than direct mill systems, and that's because you're multiplying the amount of surfaces that are going to have to deal with that shear force. And unfortunately, in Walther's case, they just didn't properly design for that. Why they switched from the good system that they used on the PPQ to the subpar system on the PDP, I have no idea, but I would expect to see breakage issues here with this thing within probably the next month. Uh, Sage Dynamics, once he starts punching some fence posts, we're really going to get an idea of how weak it is. It's kind of a shame. I like the rest of the gun, but to have such a design feature that is almost required on firearms that come out now be such a dud... It's really dragging me down about the gun. I'll put an optic on it. I'm going to test it out and make sure everything works just in normal firing. But honestly, I'm not sure I'm going to dedicate an optic to that gun. It may just stay an iron sights gun, especially with the ability to grab Glock sights and toss them on there. It's easy just to throw a good pair of sights on there. So it may just be relegated to an iron sights gun, unfortunately. So that's it for this time, guys. I know the fanboys are going to be out here taking shots. And you know what? Have at it. Whatever. But... Heed my warning a little bit, because these things are gonna break. I hope this video is useful for you. If it was, hit that like button. If you're interested in more information on the PDP, or whatever else we end up testing, go ahead and hit that subscribe and the notification bell. If you like what we do here on the channel, and you want to help out a little bit, head over to workthetrigger.com. Over there, you're going to find affiliate links, coupon codes, and merch. Thanks again, guys. I appreciate every one of you. And until next time, do your research, get informed, and get to work. Yeah.